Hello everyone and welcome to your lecture on The Concept of Flow by Gian Nakamura and Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi. Uh, flow is a really fascinating concept that has been heavily studied by Csikszentmihalyi over the course of his career. Uh, frankly, there is no one who has probably studied it more. But what is it and uh, what do we learn from this expansive chapter about it? So let's start at the most basic level. Uh, flow is a state where a person's attention is wholly focused on the action at hand. Uh, you lose your sense of self-consciousness. You lose track of time. And there's no lag between thought and action. In fact, you likely don't think, feel like you're thinking at all. You just do. Flow is an incredible feeling that I'm guessing most of you have experienced at some point in your life. Maybe you were playing a game, or singing, or dancing, or sewing, or cooking. Maybe you were in a fight. Uh, regardless of that setting, uh, flow emerges when we're doing things that are challenging and that are just a little bit beyond our current skills. Uh, one place where I've experienced flow recently is painting. Uh, I took up painting as a hobby in the last year or so. So I'm not particularly good at it, uh, but I've also set myself challenges that I thought I could meet if I just worked hard at them. Uh, that has meant the activity is challenging, but it's also a place where I can employ the skills I have and I can push them just a little bit further. Now, if the challenge was low, if I was just trying to make a stick figure on the canvas, I wouldn't reach the flow state. Uh, the work itself isn't challenging enough. On the same token, if I was trying to create a Renaissance masterpiece, I would never hit flow either. It's just too much challenge. So flow and the skill improvement that it can offer us is really about finding the ex exact spot where it's just challenging enough without being too challenging. Um, so flow. Uh, so why do we care about flow in a class about play? Uh, because play is often a space where flow happens. And because game design, whether computer games uh, or physical games like board games, are heavily focused on creating flow experiences for players. In general, I think this might be more obvious in computer games. Uh, let's consider, for example, a game that not many people loved, but that I adored, uh, the Devil May Cry reboot, DMC. Now, I won't go on to all of the reasons I loved this game, but I will say that I never really cared about the series uh, before this one, and that I really loved how overtly political DMC was. But what I liked best was I felt so in control of the game when I played it. Uh, the game's protagonist, Dante, has all sorts of attacks and weapons to use against the demonic hordes that are constantly attacking him. Um, now, controlling those various weapons and attacks just worked for me. Um, so I didn't have to think about what button to hit or when to when to dodge. I just did it. Um, flowing from one weapon to the next weapon and just wreaking havoc. And it was an absolute blast. Unfortunately, it also meant that I could burn two hours playing that game without even realizing that the time had gone by. Now that experience was part of what kept me playing the game. Uh, flow, as our reading tells us on page 244, can generate intrinsic motivation. So I didn't need any external reward to keep me playing. Uh, I just wanted to play it because I enjoyed it. Now, our reading also tells us that some people may have what they call autotelic personalities, meaning that they're more likely to do things for their own sake. Uh, those people, in theory, are more likely to enter and stay in a flow state. Uh, I'm very much this sort of person, uh, meaning I can get absorbed into many different activities pretty easily. Not everyone is like that, however. And so while most um, are likely to experience flow at some point, uh, we're not all necessarily going to experience at, as often or as deeply. Um, that, it seems, may be because of differences in our environments, um, our upbringings, maybe even in our physiology. Uh, there's a lot of open questions there about why some people find this easier than others. So if flow is a thing that helps us build skills and is enjoyable, why aren't we just doing that basically all the time? It would seem advantageous, right? Uh, well, first, flow is really fragile. Uh, the challenges we're facing have to gently increase in difficulty. Uh, but again, not too fast, not too slow. 
Uh, we also have to have space uh, where the outside world isn't going to come crashing into our flow state and ruin it. So no barking dogs or crying kids or you fall out of flow. It doesn't really discuss this, but my experience has also uh, been things like, have I slept enough? Am I hungry? Again, those are stimuli that can mess up flow. Uh, second, we might actually be in a flow state more than we know. For example, um, the authors mention on 253 that people at work are often reporting flow states, but they would still rather be doing something else, um, possibly because working often sucks. So we're in flow there, but we don't really recognize it as flow because we don't really want to be doing it. Uh, finally, flow in and of itself is morally neutral, according to our authors, meaning it doesn't have an inherent moral character. Now, what, why does that matter? Uh, because people can get into a flow state doing things we don't necessarily want them to do. Um, this is actually one of the arguments that has arisen around um, games and violence, for instance. Uh, part of the fear is that people become sort of mindless murder bots through playing violent video games. Uh, now, the research on that phenomenon has generally pointed towards that not being the case, um, though I definitely would argue that playing games always has some effect on the people playing. Um, but the larger point stands. Flow helps us improve our skills at a given activity, and it doesn't actually care what the activity is. So we should be thoughtful about the types of experiences we're trying to encourage flow in, or we might be making people really good at things that are really bad for the rest of us or for themselves. Now, I'll leave you to ponder this. Uh, what are the activities that you feel flow in? Uh, how often does it happen? What keeps you from finding a flow state? And if you had the choice, what might you change in your life to make that flow state happen more often. With that, with those big questions, I'm gonna leave off, but I will see you guys in the next one. All right, bye.